those that have watched the Talk and Chatter experience over the past few years, you'll know exactly who I am. I'm Mick, the host of that show. You'll also know that I've got a mad love of Japanese sports bikes, or sports bikes in general, really. So today we're actually out testing the Harley Davidson Pan America. And it's not really a test so much per se, but just out riding it. And uh, like I have done for the probably past, you know, 12, 15 odd months now, uh, since the Harley came out to Australia for the Pan America. In that period of time, we've been drag racing on the bike, achieved 11.6 seconds down the quarter on that for about 10 to 12 runs consistently. Even with a guy my size on it, 11.6 um, at about 190 something k's an hour, nearly 200 kilometers an hour. So definitely hums along pretty well in that drag sort of world. And if you're looking for a review or a test or something where we're gonna go over the stats or all that sort of thing, probably tune out now because it's more about feeling and you know everything that's been involved about riding the Pan America over the past 12 months. So the first weekend we got it, which was, I think it was about mid-July last year, I was fortunate enough to get the bike and uh, go away with a couple of friends on it. We went up to the Sunshine Coast Hinterland a group of another adventure bikes, probably another six or eight of us. It's probably the first Pan America in Australia that, you know, really got to go pretty much off-road and, um, you know, experiment with different rider modes, um, you know, the sports mode and everything like that. So, yeah, first sight, I was like, wow, this is a, um, this is a monstrous motorcycle. Like the rest of the adventure range in different, different brands and that, but you get on it, seat height's very good. It's got adaptable suspension, so when you pull up, if, if you've got shorter legs, which I sort of do as well, I'm sort of in that mid-range, uh, you pull up to the lights, the bike will lower itself a bit, you engage first gear, just gradually pull away. Next thing, the bike engages, lifts the suspension back up. Really cool like things for people that are a little bit shorter, or if you're out in the bush and you know, you're stuck on a, say a little rocky riverbed, as you get down to that lower speed, the suspension drops a little, and enables you to basically get your feet on the, on the ground, reset, stand back up on the pegs, and basically get your momentum going again. First time I've ridden a bike with this before, and yeah, it has been a lifesaver a few times, I must say. Especially when you do have a little bit of poor technique sometimes, like myself, who should stand up more on the bike. But that's a whole nother story. So that first weekend, we took it up to the Sunshine Coast area and through some of the roads just to sort of get accustomed to it. And, you know, I'm very tentative for one thing, it's not my bike, it's worth a bit of money uh, and it's brand new and no, at this point no one had really seen any of these floating around so you know very tentative trying to figure out you know what this bike does and we just uh, strapped on a set of Michelin Anarchies to it so we took the original OE tyres off and put these on and within about half an hour 40 minutes it was straight on. Um, the bike felt really good, it was so comfortable, like confidence inspiring, comfortable. I'm like, ah. Oh. And you know, I've got a couple of other mates that ride, you know, larger scale adventure bikes as well. And you know, from being, you know, back in that sort of six thing, just feeling pretty comfortable to all of a sudden standing on the pegs and this bike's feeling very, very um, comfortable, heaps of power. If power's your thing, you never have to worry about it. Uh, there is so much power in the Pan America, it's not funny. Like everywhere in the rev range, there's power. You can obviously turn it down through different rider modes. You can turn it up. There's a custom mode. Use the custom mode once. Um, I don't really need to. The modes that they've got set in are very, very good. I can't speak highly enough of how good the modes are from the factory. Anyway, great weekend away. Uh, it was about six or 700 kilometers on that first weekend. Bottomed it out once. You've got me loaded up with the bike. Um, I come across a cattle grid that was a dip through like a creek bed. Out of it. Bang, just, just bottomed it out just a touch. And I was hooking, like, moving. Um, so, pretty impressive overall. I was like, wow, first weekend, first love, this is pretty damn cool. Go on a few months, you know, this is a bit of a long-term review, so I hope you don't mind sitting back and listening to the story. Go on a few months, ride it a little bit more here and there, and towards the end of last year, the idea to do a track day on the bike was coming up. I love racing motorcycles on a track. That, for me, over dirt, anything. Track days, ra road racing is the pinnacle of the sport. I love it, right? So, took the Pan Americans up to, Pan Americas up to Morgan Park Raceway. Uh, we had three of them, M63, Huck 38. You know, I'm get, using keywords for these people just to hide their identity a bit. But um, we went up there, 
first session, you know, same deal. We, we chucked a different set of tyres on for this day. We chucked a set of uh, Bridgestone, I think they might have been T31s or something. Still a T, so still a tourist sort of tyre, but a lot better than like an Eneki or something that's, you know, uh, like a knobby sort of feel. First session in the wet, M63 just bolted. I, I couldn't see him and I, I think I've done probably a couple of hundred more laps than he has at that, that venue. And I was like, oh geez, I'm in for a long day here with this guy. And same with Huck 38, those, those two just streaked away in the wet. Okay. But the bike was sensational. I chucked the wet mode on. I think I was the only one that actually did. I'm a bit tentative, a bit timid if you, if you already haven't pictured this. So anyway, wound up, gradually wound up, like basically a bit of a diesel sometimes I can characterize myself as. Wound it up, got going, and um, as the track dried out, so did the pace come along. And, you know, I'm not saying that we're in the sports bike, Formula One group, fastest pace, but I think we're in the second or third group. And we're lapping around with S1000 double R's, we're lapping around with Fireblades, no other adventure bikes, just the three of us just having an absolute ball on track. There's a left-hand corner there, not too many left at that track, turn three and turn seven are the two left-hand corners on the track. And as you come out of there on the Pan Am, just as you get onto that fat part of the tire again and click up a gear, just enough traction control, just to have this beautiful power slide every lap, just as the track started to dry out. And that to me was probably one of the funnest things that I've done on a motorcycle to date. Just as you pick that power up, get on the gas and, you know, following 63 and 38 around the track, just, oh, it, it's a day that I won't forget. It was just so fun. You know, completed every session. A few people looked at them thinking, what are these bikes doing here? Never had an ounce of brake fade. 2016, I used to race at the same venue. Uh, at that time, I was doing about a 26 on a 650cc twin around the track, minute 26 that is. I think the fastest I got for the day was about a 31 or 32 um, on the Pan Am stock suspension, stock everything. So within five or six seconds of a bike that I'd already ridden three years like for three years as a race bike, pretty damn impressive. So I think if you chucked a set of 17s on, played with the suspension a bit, yeah, look out to some of those other bikes. It'd be, it'd be quite entertaining to say the least. Definitely bag a racing lead if, if there was a dissection for adventure bikes, put the Pan Am in. So that was great. Um, two days later, and this felt like a full factory time. It was, it was a great era, a, a great time. So we went out to um, Willowbank Raceway, Queensland Raceway it is, and uh, did a night track day there on the Friday night. Same crew, in the dark, somewhat dark. Awesome time, like just, you know, after riding the bike at the track day the day before or two days before, you already knew what the feel was. A bit hard to see in the dark, but you got around it. There was lights there and your bikes were very good lights, but yeah, awesome time again. Uh, we had a full Harley group, diners, a couple of low rider S's, uh, a couple of XR 1200s and the Pan Am. It, 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 it's just sensational. So we had a, another good time there. Moved on, did the dust hustle events. This is all on this bike too. Just to keep in mind, this is uh, late September 2022 when I'm making this. Uh, the bike's now got nearly 11,000 Ks on it. At that point, it had about 2,000, 3,000 Ks on mid last, eh, late last year. So put plenty of riding on it. Did Dust Hustle, uh, awesome event, tail the, tail the end of the year off. Uh, Emma McFerrin, Jared Brook, myself, Ferg, we all got to have a bit of a ride on all the different bikes. You know, the Sportster, the 750, the Pan Am. Uh, Emma and Jared just put the bikes to the absolute test on the day. Uh, turned the traction control pretty much, or Emma got the traction control off, I'm pretty sure, and just the photos of Emma and Jared sideways on this bike. Awesome riding talent. We're just showing people that this is a new era of a Harley Davidson. Um, yeah, way to end the year on Dust Hustle was mint. Here we are, 2022. Haven't done a lot of time on the bike myself, but um, a few other customers have and everything like that, which has been good to see you know, some people starting to see the bike. I personally feel over the past probably 12 months, I haven't seen dealerships around anywhere um, doing much with these, it's a shame. I've been out, you know, with the bike to certain spots and a few people are still saying, what is that? Um, it'd be nice to see everyone jump on board and actually support the adventure bike, because it is a good bike, but another story. Harley Australia earlier this year um, put an initiative out where they've done this uh, trip up to Cairns or up to the Daintree and that done it twice now. It's been really nice to see Harley Australia do something like that. And they've filmed it, they've done, the crew that's done the filming on it did such a good job to tell the story and show how good these bikes have been. Very comparable to, 
your things like in this market when you're saying your GSs, your KTMs, um, Ducati Multistrada, those premium high-end sports bike. Now, even the Triumph Tiger 1200, which the Triumph Australia team had done an awesome job with their campaign of launching the bike. A few other manufacturers could probably learn a thing or two from what Triumph's currently doing, which has been exciting to watch. Turned the clock up to sort of mid this year. We've been out to dust hustle on the bike, rode the motocross track on it, jumped it, did all the things you need to do on it. Once again, Jarrah Brook and Emma McFerrin rode, rode them pretty much all day. They, you know, cleared all the, like, cleared the jumps that you could jump on them, put on a real masterclass, just sliding them around. And Emma McFerrin was one of the ones that went for a ride up to the Daintree with the Harley Davidson Pan America. So Emma come back from basically a, a week on the bike up there and just put on a masterclass out at um, Queensland Motor Park on the bike. Awesome to watch. And, you know, Emma just throwing this bike around was something that, it's hard to fathom. Um, it, she made it look so nimble. And um, we also had Jared Brook. Jared Brook was out there as well. Uh, he rode the Pan Am, the Sportster, the Flat Tracker. When you've won as many Australian titles as Jared, travelled the world racing, it's pretty hard not to be good. Jared had this thing sideways. He jumped it, uh, did the tabletop on it. Um, once again, just just a masterclass from them both. And just watching them, I just, my skill set misses out a little bit, but that's okay. We all had a good time. Next major event for me on the bike was, uh, I went for a uh, 1200 kilometer weekend on it. We went up through basically to Dorigo with another group of friends, pretty much the same group that I went with 12 months before on that first journey with the Pan America. And just had an absolute ball. It was, we left at 6 a.m. in the morning, got into our units that we're staying at or shed, at 9.30, 10 o'clock that night, just a huge night. We did about 750, 800 Ks on that day. Seen so many different things. Awesome ride with a big group of people. Good mixture of bikes from like old R100 BMs uh, to modern Africa Twins, to you know modern GSs, KLR 650s, couple of DR 650s, and you know those pretty iconic KTM 950, 990 models that are just becoming so popular at the moment and are just an awesome all-round bike. So that was pretty cool. And, um, you know, just found every little back way that we could. I think we took three or four hours just to get ourselves across the border from Springwood. So, yeah, we made the most of that day, which was pretty cool. And that's been my introduction to riding the Pan Am pretty much. It's just been track days, drag racing, dust hustles, weekends away with my friends. It has been just a supreme all-rounder. And coming from someone like myself that just has such an affiliation to sports bikes and wanting to go to a racetrack, I didn't see myself coming over so quickly to the brand and thinking that I was going to like I was going to like this bike so much. Here we are, 15 months on from the first first time I laid eyes on it, absolutely addicted to it. Just love all the all the functions of it. Those rider modes, you know, there's a sort of highway mode or S mode. There's two different modes around, sort of set around basic road modes. The highway mode just seems to be pretty much perfect for everything that I need. Every now and then you chuck it in the S to go around the hills or something, and it works really well. Uh, power seems to be really good. Tires, that's another thing to talk about. You know, you see different people on different reviews around the world saying, you know, oh, you're gonna get, you're gonna get 300 Ks out of a tire. Yes, you probably could. But don't be scared of it. It's not like you're going to do that and you're just going to be throwing tyres at it. With that first anarchy that we put on, we got a few thousand kilometres out of it. And a lot of that was basically first day fever. It was a matter of, hey, let's see what the throttle can do in this. And we've got a couple of thousand Ks, but I have no doubt you could extend your tyre life quite well, just being con conservative a bit on the throttle. People like to say that they use the tyre in a day and things like that. It's not all about that. Uh, adventure riding really should be about going out on an adventure and trying to conserve your tyre so you can maybe do the whole adventure on a tyre. If you can just keep chucking bags at it, good on you. But for me, I just like to be able to have a consistent pace, um, especially now we're used to the bike a bit. Put it into a nice mode that you feel comfortable, travel the gear up, and it just does everything quite perfectly. What would I change to the bike? Um, from factory, from the first day, bar risers, which we've done. That's been a big bonus. I'm about six foot, pretty close on the money of six foot. If you're six foot or above, get a set of bar risers, chuck a set of pegs on it. Aftermarket pegs will just uh, open that up a little bit for you, especially if you're wearing sort of some of those more aggressive adventure boots or motocross boots if you're riding it, uh, which I usually do. Um, either that or steel cut blundstones or something like that. 
They're basically the two things that I'd change immediately. Suspension, I wouldn't touch. I just leave it how it is. The suspension feels fantastic for myself. I'm quite heavier and most most of bikes are set up, you know, conventional bikes set up 75, 80 kilos. I'm usually touching things. I'm usually mucking around, trying to get things to work a bit better, put a bit more load up on the front, purely because I'm heavier, especially when you start loading up the box and that on the back. This bike feels really good. Very soft once you're into things like rain mode and that. Uh, you put it into sport mode or that highway, like I said before, and it just, cages along really well. I haven't had anything feel very uncompliant or anything at all. So suspension I wouldn't touch. Uh, quite literally the only two modifications that I'd look at making would be bar riser and the foot pegs. Basically that runs you through everything from basically an introduction of the Harley Davidson Pan American. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit the subscribe button, give us a comment, give us a rating and a review, all that sort of stuff. Really appreciate people getting involved and obviously getting engaged with it. If you don't like the review, tell me why. Just don't put a thumbs down. Um, tell me why you didn't like it and I'll fix it. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we're gonna do a few more of these with some different bikes and got a couple of other things banking with the Talk and Chatter experience that we're gonna do over the, you know, basically over the summer and um, moving forward into 2023 and beyond. So thanks once again for listening. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down the right hand side of the corner and we'll be back with another one pretty soon. Cheers.